Screen Guild Theater. The director of the Gulf Theater and your host, Roger Pryor. Good evening, everybody. Your neighborhood good Gulf dealer and the Gulf Oil Companies welcome you to the Gulf Theater. Once again, the lights on our marquee blaze with more of Hollywood's great names. Gene Herschel, Elsa Lanchester, Charles Lawton, Reginald Owen, and, as usual, Oscar Bradley and his Gulf Orchestra. We've been getting an extra kick out of our rehearsals this week. We've rehearsed most of the time at Idlewild, a mountain camp about 150 miles from Hollywood, where Charles Lawton is taking a well-earned rest after completing the Hunchback of Notre Dame for RKO. Everything is excitement here in the Gulf Theater tonight. You see, immediately after the show, we're leaving for New York to broadcast our next few shows from there. We're going so that we can bring you Helen Hayes, Frederick March, Robert Benchley, Fred Allen, Tallulah Bankhead, John Charles Thomas, and more of your favorite stars. Stars who are at present on the Broadway stage or busy in radio instead of out here in Hollywood making pictures. They want to appear in the Gulf Theater, too, because the Gulf Theater is the star's own theater. You see, every single cent that Gulf would ordinarily give to the stars who appear here is given instead to help meet the needs of the Motion Picture Relief Fund and to build a home for the members of the motion picture industry who can no longer provide for themselves. But more about that next week. Now, it's time for lights. Music. Curtain. The scene of our play, The Beachcomber, is a small speck of a tropical island, and here we meet Ginger Ted, a dissolute beachcomber as personated by Charles Lawton. His friend, Greuter, the Dutch controleur of the island, is played by Jean Herschel. Ginger's enemies are two people who are devoting their lives to humanitarian service. Martha Jones, played by Elsa Lanchester, and her brother Owen, enacted by Reginald Owen. Our curtain rises on the courtroom. The controleur is the judge, and Ginger the prisoner. Miss Jones and brother Owen are his accusers. Order in the court. Order in the court. Well, Jen, <clears throat> Mr. Wilson, what is it this time? Oh, I wrecked the Chinaman's shop and bashed the sergeant right enough. But look at the provocation I had. If he's refined to my sister... Yes, that old clothesline ties me up in knots every time she comes anywhere near me. Will Mine you? have great right, right. I can defend myself. Yeah. Mr. Wilson, you are the prisoner if you follow me. Now, Miss Jones. Miss Dog in the main Even the communications corrupt good manners. No. I warned you, Wilson. Go on, Miss Jones. I found the prisoner in a wine shop with one of my pupils. He was inciting her to be wicked. Yeah, and she hit me with an umbrella. Old hands scratching away at other people's business. We are trying to help these people find the truth. But how are we to guide them if this so-called white man mocks at us? You sentimental suction pump. Taking all the fun out of life. That man is a peril to women. And you're a thorn in the flesh of man. Mr. Greuter, I am not on trial here. Uh, are those noises in order, Mr. Greuter? Oh. There he goes again. <laughs> order. Order, please. Now, Miss Jones, in regards to Ginger, what would you suggest? Deportation. I'm sorry, but it's necessary. Uh, perhaps you're right. Deport me? Hey. I'll pay for, pay for the Chinaman stuff I broke if he'll give me time. Mm, you'll pay for the damage, all right. But it's me who'll give you the time. And that'll be three months. Hey, for me? At hard labor. What did you say? On the road gang. Who? Me? Let me go. Order. 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 Cut him out, like an offending eye. Oh, heaven knows. I promised myself often enough that I would deport him. Oh, I knew you'd see the light. Yeah, I've, I've sent for Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Oh! Oh, come on. I can't bear to be near that man. Good day. Come here, Ginger. It does stick in my craw. You giving way to that twitty twerp. Ah, sit down. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Don't mind if I do. Approach it. Down the hatch. 
Have one of your own cigars. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Ginger, I don't know what to do with you. Neither did anybody at home. I was a problem child. Oh, can't you control yourself? I make practically a companion of you, and you're behaving like this. Oh, it hurts, Ginger. Hey, I'll do that work on the road gang for you. No, no, no. Well, it's your duty to punish me. Oh, but an Englishman on a native road gang. Oh, I never thought of that. Well, couldn't you just put me in jail and have my government him and haw at me for feeding you for three months? <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. There it is. What shall we do? Uh, there must be some. Ginger. I've got it. Yeah. I shall send you to Echo Island. There's no punishment. <laughs> it will be, Ginger. There's no alcohol on Echo. Hi, what you say? <laughs> Miss Jones, wouldn't it be better if I stayed for dinner so much? No, no, no. You haven't been near us since the trial a fortnight ago. It isn't at all inconvenient, Mr. Greuther. Who is it, Martha? It's the controller, dear. Oh, well, leave the door ajar, sister. Then I can chaperone you. Yes, so in. I've got a real English dinner for you tonight. My dear controller. Yes, when the dangers as fast for oh. us, the commandant here and wrecked that the Kapala Aldar who were in signal buoy kept out. Mm. Well, what does he say? The chief on Ego Island has a little appendix. Appendicitis? It'll have to be operated on at once. Well, since your brother's in bed with fever, I'm afraid the appendix will have to be Oliver, you can't move an appendix, can you? Oh, I've helped her in scores of times. Oh, of an acute appendix is nothing to dawdle over. I know. The poor soul don't. might die. I'll, I'll get the necessary things together straight away. Oh, I'm thankful that woman is not a sister of mine. The chief will now be well and strong, Nona Jones. Yes, Sergeant. I may say the chief's operation was very successful. Oh, I've always liked Ego Island. I think I shall take a little walk while we're waiting for the launch. Nature's so uh, natural, isn't it? Coconut meal. Oh, go away. Please. For Taila. Yes. A smell of milk like a blasted baby. <laughs> Stop your row. I'll bet the controller's drinking his beer and laughing at me. Ginger. Oh, shut up. Leave me alone, Taila. You don't like me. Well, you do as a barmaid. Do you think I am pretty? Yeah, you're pretty. Pretty as the girls where you come from? Ah. Oh. The barmaid's eyes are blue, not black at home in England. And when it's cold, her cheeks are red as apples. You can fill your lungs with clean, bright coals in England, paint pictures with your frozen breath, and your boots make music in the snow in wintertime at home in England. That is nice. Even if I cannot understand it, it... Help! No! It is going to join us! Help, it's the tea kettle. How does it even be? Lying in a hammock surrounded by native girls? Ah, dry. Don't you dare open your mouth to me, you unregenerate man. So this is the sort of punishment the controller sent you to. Get to your feet. Sergeant, take this man into custody. There you are, living in pagan idleness instead of reforming yourself by responsibility and trust. You was much backbone as you have conscience. Well, you've had your chance to reform and lost it. Now you'll be really deported if I have to go to the government of the head of the controller. Aren't you listening to me? No. Oh! No, no, Jones, you must keep seated, please. The channel is very narrow here. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. The only man is vile. Sergeant, will you toss me up that jug? There'll be no drinking while I'm on board. Sergeant. Ma Did you hear me? Madam, they can hear you in Honolulu. Give me that jug. I won't. Give it to me. Take your hands off. Give it to me, you. I say. I'll give you something. The reef, look out. Uh, uh, you uh. see, I told you to keep seated. What happened? You rocked the boat and the propeller hit the reef. Now you're satisfied? You better try and make that island, Sergeant. 
Sergeant, I order you to continue on our way home. Shut up. If we can make that island, Sergeant will put on the spare tire in the morning. In the morning? Yes. Yeah. Does, does that mean that we shall have to stay here all night? Yeah, you've got it. <laughs> Even you must realize I can't spend the night on an uninhabited island with two men. Do I have to draw a diagram of it oh, for no, you? No, 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 it's quite impossible. I said it's quite, quite impossible. I'll wait ashore and carry you. You'll get a bit wet, but when we get there, you can take off your skirt and dry out. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, you must have a mother or sister, perhaps. Carry her! Oh, please, please let me go. Oh, stop yowling and save your breath. Sailing, oh, sailing oh, over the mountain oh, range. Oh, 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 So the curtain falls on Act One of The Beachcomber. Ladies and gentlemen, the one minute of silence observed yesterday by millions of American men and women is dramatic proof that the United States is one great nation joined together by the bond of sympathy and understanding of its people. Thousands of square miles that might be divided into a dozen different countries are at peace under one flag. Tonight I'd like to suggest that we ask ourselves... What are some of the things that help keep us united? For the most part, they're simple things. Things that go to make up our everyday life. The common language, common customs, radio programs to which we all listen, and perhaps most of all, the automobile outside your door. For that automobile, combined with the good roads that America has built for it, makes all Americans neighbors. Good neighbors. That's why, in behalf of the Gulf Oil Companies and of your neighborhood good Gulf dealer... I'd like to express to all of you our pride in being a part of the American scheme of things and helping in the work of keeping this country the United States. The curtain of the Gulf Screen Guild Theater is about to rise on the second act of The Beachcomber, starring Charles Lawton, Elder Lanchester, Gene Hersholt, and Reginald Owen. Lights! <laughs> Music. Curtain. It's evening of the next day. The repaired launch has returned from the desert island with Ginger and Miss Jones. Ginger is having dinner with the controller. <laughs> so you are blue in the face, Ginger. But I don't believe you. It was awful on Agor Island. Ah, you are a liar. <laughs> Have you ever lived for three months on coconut milk? Well, no. But, uh... Who's that? Sounds like that blasted brother of Miss Jones. Oh. Oh, there you are. Yeah. You must excuse me for dashing in. But when I heard Wilson was here, I simply had to come. Wilson, thank you. Thank you, Wilson. You've done a great and noble thing, Wilson. I beg your pardon? My sister Martha was right. There is so much good even in the worst of us. I misjudged you, Wilson, and I beg your forgiveness from the bottom of a very full heart. That guy's feverish, Conqueror. <laughs> he had my sister at his mercy on that lonely, uninhabited island, and he spared her. What? <laughs> we see him now in his two colors at last. Don't we, Consular? What? My God bless and guard you, Mr. Wilson. You must excuse me for dashing away so quickly, but my sister's not quite herself. Edward. I may call you Edward. Thank you again, and good night, Edward. <laughs> good night, Consular. <laughs> Didn't he call me Edward? <laughs> what did that jack in the box mean? <laughs> oh, he oh, 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 oh. was thanking you, Ginger, because when you had his sister on your paw... What did I do? He was picked as her virtue and didn't force your attention. <laughs> hey, <laughs> do you mean me? And her. <laughs> it's an insult. You take it back. Oh, 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 all this time it must have been. Must have been what? <laughs> it must have been love. Why, uh... <laughs> I didn't mean to hit him so hard. I'd better get lit. I'll stay stewed for a week. <laughs> Oh, 
What are you up to? You meddlesome Matty, get out of my house. House? It's more like a big sign. Oh, shut up, Leah. What are those you got? Clothes. My brother thought you might not be offended if we lent you something so that you could come and dine with us. Oh, he did, did he? Well, I'll bet you put him up to it. Mr. Wilson, my brother and I count ourselves your friends, and we consider that you need help, and help you will be whether you like it or not. Uh, now, let's now have no more nonsense. Wash and shave yourself, and put on these clothes and come to our house for dinner. <laughs> I'm afraid he isn't coming, Martha. It's only eight. You'll still be a bit stale. Oh, thank you not keep talking about it, Owen. Martha. Oh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> there he is now. I'll go. Oh, Miss Jones. Oh, Mr. Grotter. Come in. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, but... Something wrong? Yes. You're needed on one of Swamp Island. Typhoid. Epidemic proportions, I'm afraid. Oh. I'll start at once. I'll pack for you, Owen. Excuse me, Mr. Draper. Of course. It's fortunate I have plenty of serum. Yes, watch out for trouble when you go to inoculate them. They're savages. And if they are aroused by you... I appreciated the difficulties when I chose my life's work. Ginger! Here are your clothes, Jones. What do you mean? Maybe they'll fit the next dummy that comes around here. Ginger, get out. Do you hear me? Get out. I'm getting out all right on tomorrow's boat. Do you think I want to be made a laughing stock of? Who's making you one? That sister of yours. She's got me developing a case of nerves. Well, at this moment, there's nothing of less importance than your nerves. Now, why? What's up? Typhoid. One of Sombo Island. Extremely serious. Oh, so long, Consular. I shall miss your company, but you can't have everything. And what I want now is peace. Peace comes from within. You put a sock in that. I was brought up on that stuff. Wilson, Mr. Jones has always tried to help you. Well, it was his duty, wasn't it? To a fellow man, a fellow Englishman in distress. No more. Now, we have a duty for you. I've served my time. You are one of us here, and you're needed. What, me? Leap into an epidemic? Now, yes. see here, Wilson. These natives will have to be forced to cooperate. I could do with a man there. Me? Yes. Yeah, Barney. No, oh, he'd rather stay south to the ears. No, I don't think so. After all, Wilson, you are a man, aren't you? Well, what about it? Okay. Thank you. Look out. Oh, Miss Jones. Owen's painted. Owen, Owen, what is it? All right, I've Owen. got him. Owen. Oh, it's a relapse. Carry him into the bedroom. Give me a hand, Cotter, will you? Surely. Well... This ends the expedition to one assemble. No. No. I'll go. I'll go in my brother's place. That lets me out. What does what does he mean? Well, Ginger has agreed to go with Mr. Jones. Of course, if you're going in your brother's place, well then with her? Mm -hmm. oh. Mr. Wilson! Mr. Wilson! Mr. Wilson. You're not drunk now? No. And you won't come? With you? No. After all, there's no reason why you should come. It, it is my job. I can go alone. Well, uh... Mr. Grider. Yes, Mr. Grider. Look at that one. I'd better go. He's gone, Mr. Jones. I didn't think it was in him. Poor Edward. I doubt whether after that night on the island, Edward has a chance. A woman scorned is a vessel of wrath, and my sister is a very determined woman. I believe I know how Miss Nightingale felt when she landed in the Crimea. In style. I shall begin the inoculations at once, Mr. Wilson. Uh -huh. Leave them alone for tonight. They're in a panic. There's half the village dying in its tracks. You stay inside your hut where you'll be safe. Till I say you can take the air. Why? Well, because, because you need to be taken care of. But I'm not afraid. Look here, now. You hit the hay. Huh? What? It's an American expression. It means to go to bed. Oh, it is expressive, isn't it? Yeah. Good night. <laughs> One more peep out of you, my girl, and I'll spank you. 
Well, you can't sit down. Oh. La, 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 la. What's the matter with that kid? Is it typhoid? It may be. It's difficult to make the rose rash diagnosis on such dark skin. What are you going to do? Inject serum. Okay, but mightn't that stuff... Will you wash your hands, please? Yes, but she's the headman's daughter. Listen. You see, they're getting restless already. If she should die after a shot of that, it'd be us who'd killed her. It'd be sticky for us, you know. Will you wash your hands, please? Yes, ma'am. It's all right, baby. Of course it hurts. I had a tooth out once and I yelled so hard it rang the church bells a mile away. She doesn't understand English. Oh, it's never the words. It's the way you say them. You have such a gift for language, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Hey, it sounds as if it's going to rain. It'll cool them down a bit. I don't think they'll attack when it's raining. Think I'll go out and see what's going on. You're wet through. You've been standing out there in the rain for hours. Do come in and have a cup of tea. Cup of tea? Yes. Yes, I've just made tea. Come in. Well, thank you. I'm afraid I can't offer you milk. Never was much of a one for milk in my tea. I say, how is the kid getting on? Oh, no change yet. Do you take sugar? Thank you. Ah. Any of your thoughts, Mr. Wilson? You know, it's sort of swank sitting down to tea in this godforsaken spot. It's not godforsaken now, Mr. Wilson. There. I hope you like this. Yeah, you look fine. Oh, you mean this old thing I'm wearing? I, I meant the tea. Yeah. Do you... Do you mind if I, uh, smoke? Uh, no. Edward? Thank you, Martha. Look here. Would you mind if I told you something? No. Before it's too late, I, I'd like to tell you why I've carried such a chip on my shoulder, Buster. What's that? It's a spear. Get back from the window, will you? Well, they're like a lot of kids. When I was a kid, I used to march around the house yelling and walloping a drum. I'm sorry I got you into this. Blasted woman's place is in the home. <laughs> I say, are you laughing at me? No, no. I never have. Really. You haven't? I don't really mind. You know, I'm used to it. I was the fat boy... At... I was the fat boy school. Uh, they used to call me Jack Spratt. Jack Spratt could eat no fat. His wife could eat no... Oh, I mean, of course, I didn't mean... Oh, that's all right. We'll keep the platter clean anyway. Hmm? One does have to think of expenses, I suppose. Well, let me tell you that argument that two can live as cheaply as one is so much twaddle. Oh, I'm not prepared to admit that. It's simply a question of household management. Yeah, with a manager getting all the salary. Does that mean you've been married? What, me married? Bro. What's the matter with it? You've only got to look at the papers. Shh. Look, look, her fever's broken. Hey, you sure? Yes, see, look. Look, she's smiling. Hey! Hey, Chief! Chief! Your kid's gonna get better! Hey, Chief! 